Alright. Time for the next installment of the Beginner's Guide series. Today I will be playing some Nidalee into a Ramus here, which it's not the greatest matchup. He's pretty hard to kill. Uh, if he just runs me down, gets an engage on me, that would be pretty bad. So, yeah, I can definitely pressure him a bit early, but that also goes into the uh, playstyle of Nidalee that I don't really want to do for a Beginner's Guide, so I will not be doing that. Um, because pretty much everyone knows that Nidalee is a very difficult champion to play. There are ways to make it easier on yourself if you do enjoy this champion, if you want to get into it. And that's pretty much how I'm going to be playing it today. So, yeah. Now, there is a playlist in the description that you can check out for the uh, champions that you are potentially looking for. If the champions aren't in the playlist yet, they most likely will be. So, all you really have to do is uh, well, wait it out. And subscribe as well. I upload daily. So, yeah. On this side of the map, you want to take your W second. On the other side of the map, you want to take your E second. Because the W is better for the AoE camps. And your E is better for the single target camps like Brom and... Um, uh, well, I mean, Wolves, I suppose, as well. They aren't that not too many in that camp, you know. So with the W, you can use this to your advantage, right? You can get W resets of your Tiger or your Cougar form, and then that way you can clear these AoE camps a bit faster, which actually helps you quite a bit. There you go. Take all your abilities. We're just going to go for a full clear. There are definitely pathing choices that can make you that, that you can go for that are way more aggressive for like invade potential and stuff. And you can even take Electrocute instead of, instead of Dark Harvest as well for the same purpose. But yeah, we are playing it nice and slowly consistent. The easiest version. Okay, I mean, the list I got first bought, which is kind of good, I suppose. Gotta use your heals. The clear on this champ is gonna like require a bit of uh, learning, I suppose. You want to switch between your forms. You want to make sure that you use your like Q, um, like the beast form Q, I guess, to like execute on lower HP because it does more damage. Use your Ws to reset from procs of your passive as well. Those are like all big things. Okay, I mean, you pop the potion as well, to be fair. One thing to remember with your... Just give me one second. Red buff applied, throw a spear, you flashed. Okay, one thing to remember with... I'm gonna try something here a little bit real quick, let's see. Uh, minion wave came in. Um. Again, one thing to remember with your uh, dash, W dash, is that you need to wait for the line to appear, otherwise you're not going to get the dash off. So you saw me wait until the line appears there, and that's when I go in on Remus. I always had lucky 2 HP, because I had way more than 2 HP, but sure. Wave is huge here, that fist, like, the fist kind of lost lane straight away, actually. I could technically dive him. He's gonna get some. Uh, I should have held the wave though. Throw my spear on him. Holding wave here. Remus is most likely going to show, I, th I would think. Ah, she missed that one. She had to hit that last one for that uh, kill to be a kill. It's okay. I'm just gonna recall. It's fine. Nothing too much to worry about, really. Oh! You get increased movement speed in bushes, so definitely use that to your advantage. Help this guy out hitting Trendemir. Ah, the fist rotation up. Okay, well. Lawi wanted to turn. I didn't really, because I saw the fist rotation up as well. But then she committed, and I was like, I kind of have to help her, don't I? Uh, I really, sh I probably should have just left her die, honestly. I saw on the map rotation that the Fizz was coming up, so it was going to be a 3v2. And that's why I didn't, that's why you saw me initially run with the movement speed you gained through bushes. But, 
yeah, the Alawi tried to turn and I was like, maybe I should help turn. Build a Trendemir or something. He didn't die as easily as I thought he would either. That kind of sucked. Very good rotation from Fizz though, I give him that one. It's, it is what it is, you know. It happens. If it can go bot lane here. That is a kill. Auto attack, auto attack. I really... Wait, hello? I got... I clicked the minion, I think. It really sucks that the Maokai didn't want to take turret aggro there. I was planning to... Ooh! Ilawi ultimate coming in. I was planning to, like, slowly turret dive, but Maokai wasn't the one that took turret aggro there, so I actually didn't get to do that the way I wanted to. If the Maokai would have actually taken turret aggro in that situation, I could have potentially dove and killed Sona. But I was the one that took turret aggro first, because he walked out of turret aggro, as you saw. So at that point, I couldn't really commit anymore. I mean, I missed my spear, I suppose, but I was trying to close the distance more before using it in the first place. I'm actually going to use my trap here to see if the Fizz walks through it, because he is with pressure on mid lane right now. He has hit the plant as well. There is the Fizz. He's definitely both side. I'm not going to be able to help, though. I mean, actually, at this point, I might have to. He got his recall there, he's dead. Thank you. That is just free collection of the bounty. I'm gonna try this. <laughs> Let's go. Nice. Good stuff. Turn up the minion wave real quick as well. Very, very good. I had to react there because the Fizz got very low. He was going to try to recall in like the bush here or like here or something. And I can just easily clean that up. No problem. Get that as well. And then we just build Night Harvester here. Night Harvester is definitely the easiest one to go with. Admittedly. Because the playstyle I am going to go for is like kind of ranged pokey. Um, just create an engage after doing a good amount of damage type deal, you know. Instead of going more in-your-face type combat style on this champion, that combat style is much more playable. That's also why I take like Dark Harvest instead of, for example, taking like Electrocute. And uh, stuff like that. It's big, big differences there. Also, I'm using the alt keys here as well for normal cast to see ranges on my Q. Like I, for those of you who watched my uh, settings thing, settings video, you can also find that in the playlist, by the way, for the beginner's uh, guide things. To get my ranges for Nidalee to land my spear, spears easier. I don't think Rami should be ganking tilt, but I think he probably is looking for something there. Let's see if I can go mid lane here. Perhaps. I think I might be able to drag in here. We see that, we see that guy running tilt. He's doing a herald, yeah. This is definitely an angle for a dragon, because right there, with the fist running top, and we know Remus is also somewhere topside, this is just an angle for dragon. Bolt lane is kind of shoved in. No reaction capabilities for the enemy team. Good. Walking from this side. Good. This, this man does not want to press, like, anything, really. Walk that one. Perfect. I was waiting for Maokai to let's press his W so he gets snared and I could just get a free spear and we one shot Caitlyn, but he didn't get the chance to get in range, I suppose. Which is fine. I'm able to use the plan to close distance. Very good. Right there, what I do with my Q is I throw it in the path he's going to walk towards, because he's definitely chasing Vygar, right? That's a guarantee. So if I throw it into the path he's going to walk into, that's most likely going to hit. Don't be greedy, man. You see, he is literally 1 HP and Remus can be anywhere right now. Good. Who is coming? Who do you think, my guy? You have no mana, no HP. If Remus doesn't show for the gank, he's trolling. 
He must have a decent amount of gold as well. There is no reason for him to stay there. The wave's already in turret and everything. Yeah, see? There he is. He would have been dead. Remus was slow on it, though. For sure, he could have definitely gotten that kill. But still. There we go. Clear this out as well. And then we go bot lane once again. Now, you can go for Magius, but obviously I will not. Because Nidalee dies very, very easily. So I will not uh, assume that you will be able to pull that off. But the Dark Seal is still good to hold on to. No doubt. I'm gonna rotate over to the bot lane real quick. Make sure to just hop with your W here and there, you know, get a bit of movement speed going. If you can touch any bushes, that would be good as well for the additional movement speed from that. I am down to go for like a nice lane gank here. Oh, you are not serious. Okay, well. Throw the spear. Good. Kill my, my boy up here. I'm gonna smite there so I can get the, uh, the proc on the thing as well. Right. Air kill on the top side, I suppose. I can't, I can't do everything. Like, I'm trying my best here. This, this allow is complaining about the ganks and stuff, but... I'm trying to gank mid, I'm trying to gank bot, do what, what ha help wherever I can, you know. Sometimes it just ends, like, there's not much I can do. The Remus is focusing top, like, sure, but in return, their bot lane is getting absolutely decimated. I'd, I'd rather have a winning bot side, honestly, so, you know. One shot him. That is probably me dead, actually. Almost walked into that one. What is this dive, man? This dive is so... So bad. Okay, that works. Jesus Christ. I don't know if this is gonna work out for this guy. He needs to run, man. That is some greed right there. Alright, it works for us somehow. I don't know how, but I'll take it. Oh god. This guy's not gonna do this, right? Let me see. Just keep auto attacking him for now. Don't have red buff, but like. Make sure to land the spear. I suck. <laughs> I missed it there. It's okay. Ah, damn. I should have hit the spear there on the last. on the uh, back end of that one for sure. Remus is very tanky. Alright, fair enough. I mean, he, he gets to live. Uh, I don't really have to recall here. I can, but. I have some camps to do. I also see the Caitlyn potentially walking up again, actually, so I might be able to pull this off because the Sona isn't there yet. Oh, I have to I have to wait for the Maokai to land that here, and then we go for it. There we go, perfect. Wait for wait for CC from laners if you can. If you have an opportunity to wait for any type of CC, like a Vygar stun or a Maokai snare. The good thing you saw the Maokai do there as well. He waited with his Q, so he didn't disrupt my uh, Q throw, and. Like, make me miss it, if you know what I mean. So the Caitlyn got hit by it. But always try to wait for lane CC if you can. Quite important. It'll help you quite a lot. Make sure I keep clearing here. I would kind of like to do Dragon, but I'm almost level 11, so I'm pressuring for that first, which I didn't get in this situation. That kind of sucks. I could probably still land this spear and kill him. Hits. Okay, let's go dragon now. Use my tiger form to move a bit faster here. So I'm gonna heal her so I get the assist. Did I have? Did I actually like? Oh. I should have finished the Sona off, man. I really thought the Callista was gonna be able to get him, but. It was a bit more of an annoying chase than I thought it was going to be. I'll make sure I do dragon here. Make sure I also ping that I don't have smite. I kind of had to use it there to make that fight a bit cleaner. To make sure my Kai'Sa didn't die. So, I mean, Ramus is going for the bolt play, so we should be fine here. You kind of have to react to the team here if I can. 
Go this way, where are you going? Oh man. I don't know why he ran for me. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to run here. You cannot cage an enemy has been slain. I mean he, I got hit so or I, I saw him so he definitely saw me with that thing on. I blocked it for Sona, fair enough. I am out of mana, please don't do this. Oh, what I did, I do that. And I'm also exhausted. I don't know if I can survive this, honestly. Oh, you... You are not serious with that one. Damn. The ram has ran through the Sona the exact second I clicked smite. So I didn't smite the Sona for the kill, I smited Remus instead. I didn't really want to go in on that because my mana pool was very scarce and I had a lot of gold. But fuck am I first I just suicided into that one? Oh. Actually I should take the wave, that would be grief if I didn't. Your has been destroyed. Like the bounty on the wave there. I'm gonna have to back man, I have way too much gold. See it. I'm doing quite well here, like, options are Zonias, but since I'm doing reasonably well for this early game, I'm just gonna go straight Lichbane, and then I'll go Zonias after that. Because Lichbane is just a bunch of additional damage. Uh, he's gonna be dead. I don't think Ila Ooh, Ilawi pulls this off. Nice, champ's OP. Very smart buy of the Steel Caps there as well. Caitlyn's not worth too much money anymore. I would probably just ignore both for the rest of this game. If I can, still focus on some dragons, but I've got enough, I think. Try to get some kills on Trendemir, perhaps Fizz as well. Fizz is like the biggest problem on their team currently. That kills, we have to sprint to bot lane because the enemy is going bot lane as well. Go there as quick as possible. Try to land him with a spear while he's walking. That, that works perfectly. That's about all I could do. Yeah, you should not do that. That's probably pretty greedy. My team like plays as far away from like the team our team side as they physically can. Please don't do this to me. I have the blue smite increase. He doesn't so. I am kind of chilling. Hoping to land that on the Fizz or something. I need to play it very defensive. Ramus Taunt can really destroy me into a Fizz combo. I have to be careful. But damn, he didn't walk up. Oh, well. Trying to land some spears, perhaps see if I can hit some poke or something. I have to realize there's no turret here as well. Uh, I'm gonna hit this plant up so she has some vision. There's the fizz. If I can land that on the fist, no, he eat. As you see, the way I'm playing this, I'm playing this for as much distance as I can get. Oh god, don't hit me with that, thank you. Jesus Christ. I have to be respectful for Remus coming in from the side or something. There's no ult. Yeah, hard to land, you know. Kill me, please. He walks close to the wall, so what I do is I clo uh, throw it as close to the wall as possible. Uh, if he runs to, uh, to that side, he then insta dies. Like, if people are dodging close to walls, always try to, like, close the distance between the wall and your spear as much as you can. Because then that way it's easy to clean or easy to hit. Rather. Oh, 
Rather Mauka not recall here. Okay, good. Cancel this recall. That's very good. Enemy jungler is dead. Dragon spawns. This is the perfect time to just do it. What I'm trying to do here as well is I'm trying to like proc my Lich Bane as often as possible between my abilities. So hit, hit, you know, try to get Lich Bane procs for additional damage. Some stuff to look out for. And it's smiting with Nidalee, the biggest thing I would recommend you if you want to secure smites is try to get like the mark on the target and then do smite when it's low HP. Because um, then that way you will be able to execute it from a bit higher. Which, if you have Lich Bane especially as well, even more AP, it's going to be quite hard to out smite for the most part. The easiest way to get smites done with Nidalee. Right here, I'm just going to quickly clear my bolt side. I have quite a bit of gold again, so I definitely want to look towards recalling here. Get the level up to 14. Again, Magi's would be an option, but... Uh, absolutely a choice. I'm just going to build this. Last two items for me are going to be Void Staff and Death Cap. Uh, but Zonias is very, very good against this team. Because the only way I'm dying, really, is getting one shot or getting outlasted by Trendemir, if that makes sense. So, I would rather uh, have the Zonias for those situations. Just throw a spear. We can easily Baron here. I can just heal my Maokai up. We killed our jungler. The second you kill the enemy jungler in a situation like this, you see the Trendemir botlane and stuff, you just go for Baron. I should have healed Maokai there. Oh. This is where we press Sonia's to dodge the fizzle damage so I don't get absolutely obliterated. What the heck is that? That's good. Callista's going both sides, that's fine. The enemy team doesn't have a chance there. I'm gonna heal my Vigar once there, because that way he doesn't risk dying to like uh, some splash damage from Baron, basically. Oh, he's my smite by 10. Oh, perfect. If you're playing this style of Nidalee, where you just want to poke a lot, then definitely try to take blue as well. Especially if you're more fat than your mid laner. Uh, blue is great for this Nidalee, because it just gives you all the mana sustain you would need. go. Wait, how much gold do I need for this? 250. That's a big one to get. I otherwise don't really have anything to recall for. I just... How much? 130. Gold is this now? 27. I'm actually gonna do this. I hope my team doesn't int. It's a massive buy, especially against something tanky like a Ramus dealing with him, you know? Let's get the Void Staff. Allow he died. Two ults used. We're gonna run through jungle instead of through lane to get the mid lane faster, because you get extra movement speed from these bushes here. Plus your passive as well, so you're gonna just run much faster. This just gives me overall more mobility. Make sure to clip everything here as well. Good damage. Void Staff coming in clutch there really already. Helping me get through like Ramus resistances and stuff. Maybe there. You don't really have to land your spears necessarily, just already throwing them and like potentially hitting them is already very scary to deal with. Fuck my trap. Get my Vigar there real quick. Close one, that could have been an insta kill really. That was not good. That is an example of why, like, I didn't wait for my for that bar to appear, so it didn't actually dash to the target. Let's hit this once. Oh, didn't kill. Just calmly sustain yourself. You have a blue buff. You should be fine for the most part. Try to throw a bunch of spears on next range, whatever you can hit. And this is why we have Zonias. Exactly why we have Zonias. Perfect. Execute him. Very good. We just press, like, against fish, you just press Zonias preemptively. And it looks like the enemy team gave up. So that's cool. That's it for Nidalee. Last item here would be switching this for Deathcap. Obviously, you can also, like, build the Magis and then 
eventually uh, skip out Lich Bane and just go Death Cap straight away that way as well. That works too. But yeah, that is it for Nidalee. And I'll see you guys in the endgame stats now. All right, so for the endgame stats here as well, I ended up doing 29.1k damage, which is by far the most here. I saw a 10k damage lead on the rest. Very, very, very good. True damage done at 700, which is just smite damage, really. Damage to objectives at 44.5k. I tried to have as much dra uh, dragon control especially as possible. Uh, the enemy team was mostly playing for topside, which in this current meta is generally a bad idea. Because, as you saw, my bot lane got a lead. Caitlyn had, like, 14 deaths at the end of that one, because I just kept going bot lane. Like, I tried top lane initially, you know, but after that, just keep going bot lane and just kept... Yeah, well, enemy team just lost. Uh, so... But, yeah, damage to objectives. Try to hold as much dragon control, objective control as possible as a jungler. Always important. Uh, if this is, like, let's say my damage to objectives would be... Like, whatever Ilawi did here, that would be terrible. Same thing kind of goes for Remus, but to be fair to him, because I was the winning jungler, obviously I get the objective damage and he doesn't. But let's say he won this game, and he had this amount of objective damage compared to my objective damage, then he is literally just trolling. Because at that point you don't make, like, at that point you don't uh, use the map advantage, team advantage that you have from winning, winning lanes then at that stage to go for those objectives, which is a crucial mistake. So this is a very easy stat to tell if you are doing well as a jungler in the role or not. So definitely always look at this if you are interested. Healing done at 8.2k, which is just nidalee heal really. That is can stack up a bunch more, especially the more AP you get. Especially if you would go for a build like um, Night Harvest or Magi's Death Cap. Like super heavy AP and your heals go up through the roof. So this would work with that quite well and that would spike that stat. Uh, damage taken at 25k here as well. I'm actually surprised I took that much damage. I thought it was going to be a bit less, I suppose, but... Okay. Self-mitigated damage at 15.8k. Gold earned at 15.6k. And for the runes, Dark Harvest dealt about 2400 damage. Very solid. The most, like, Dark Harvest works especially well with, like, the place that I was trying to go with. Like, just trying to max range a bunch of stuff, land a bunch of spears, and then once I get something low... I can then go in with a W, wait for that line to appear, of course, and then execute it with Q uh, in safe situations, of course. Uh, that's really the place that I was trying to go with. That's probably the easiest version. There are, like, Conqueror builds for Nidalee and stuff like that, but those get into, like, crazy, like, amounts of just skill level that is just not even feasible, really, for most players. Sudden Impact for 755. Sudden Impact works especially well with uh, the going in stage because it procs off your W jump, right? So you land a spear first and then the sudden impact will work with when you jump on them with W to execute them with Q. It's going to be slightly slightly more damage that way and that's why you want to like combine that really. So this amplifies that Q execute damage hit quite nicely. Uh, eyeball collection for just 30 AP. Treasure Hunter to get the tempo going. Like, like you can get an early lead with Nidalee pretty easily because there's a lot of matchups he just wins especially like landing a good spear and like early 1v1s against the enemy jungler like you saw me do against this Ramus this game uh, if you can get going from a stage like that with treasure hunter you're gonna snowball really fast uh, water walking for map mobility and then transcendence is really good on nidalee because every second really matters in this champion's kit if you can get a spear off a second earlier, off after getting a kill, if you can get a heal off a second earlier, you can switch forms, whatever. Like, every single second matters, so Transcendence is actually really, really good rune. It didn't re refund me too many seconds this game specifically, but the seconds it has refunded, like these 8 seconds here, can definitely just be super valuable 8 seconds in fights. Because Nidalee is, like, very, very, like, time-constrained type of champ. Like, every single second matters in combat. Every single ability as well, she has a lot of them, so it works really well. In closer team fights in later stages of the game, uh, this can easily add a bunch of additional seconds, pretty easily. But it is the best rune to get while also getting like water walking from map mobility. The other option would be absolute focus if you want to play like completely safe. Um, that would be okay, uh, but Nidalee is pretty squish, loses her HP quite easily, so that's why I don't really like. And she's also easy to engage on. Like, it's not like you're playing like Evelyn, for example, where you can just uh, be invisible and don't get hit. So that's what, like, dropping below the 70% threshold on HP is pretty common, and then the rune just kind of disappears. So, yeah. But uh, that is it for Nidalee. 
you guys have enjoyed this video make sure the like button below and i'll see you guys tomorrow with another video bye